This is a question for David. David, if there were a, a brief outline we could give someone now, a, a blueprint, of course, there's many different ways to go. What would be the key points that you would recommend to a new or novice guitar player, even intermediate? Say, we have a lot of people who have been playing your years that don't have a path, don't have a structure, don't have a plan. What would you recommend or give us the key guideline of things that you'd really recommend that we stress or they stress working on? That's a good question, Tim Gilberg. Um, I would say that um, if you're if you're more of an intermediate player or around there or advanced, what's what's the key things to get your playing to the next level? I think there's there's like six or seven, in my opinion, things that are must knows, things that you really really need to be concentrating on to get your playing to the next level. Uh, one of them would be know the notes on the guitar neck. That's so often overlooked. People just learn the fret numbers or tablature and that's not or shapes you know and that's not going to get you to the next level you really got to know the notes cold be able to pick out all the a notes all the c notes if you're playing over a certain chord stop on a certain landing note knowing the notes cold is critical um, that's something if you're not doing you really want to be learning that and you can do that over time and we show you how to do that on the website um, another another one i think is you need to know a large catalog of chords Every guitar player, you know, certainly learn your basic open position chords and sevenths and dominant sevenths, but as you go on in your journey, you really want to keep learning more and more chords. It'll open up more avenues, more sounds, more soundscapes. So knowing a large catalog of chords is, is critical. Um, another one would be uh, l learn how to play and practice your rhythm skills. Learn really solid rhythm skills and work with a metronome, you know. Too many people, I think, are focused too much on lead guitar only. And if you want to focus on lead guitar, I think that's great. I love lead guitar too. But when you're in a band or you're playing with your friends or whatever, you're in a band, you're going to be playing rhythm 90% of the time. The solos are very small sections of songs. So you're, in my opinion, you're your soloing skills are only really ever going to be as good as your rhythm skills. So you really want to have rock solid timing, work with a metronome, and really have a big rhythm vocabulary. Okay. Um, another item would be learn how to analyze the chords if you're soloing that you're playing over. You got to look at the chords and the progression in order to get the um, the roadmap to what you can use solo and improvisation wise, right? You can't just go by the key. That won't give you enough information. It's just a small part of it. But knowing the chords and learning how to analyze them and knowing what scales, what modes you can play over each chord, that's really going to open up the fretboard and open up a whole new different sounds and textures and whatnot. But knowing how to do that is a critical step. Most people are just like, what key are we in, Frank? C. C minor. Okay. I'll play C minor pentatonic. And that's fine, but it's going to be a little limiting after a while. You might want to play C Dorian, C Aeolian. You might want to throw in a different mode over a different chord. So being able to analyze the chord string, that'll give you the roadmap. That'll show you what you can use um, solo and improvisation wise. And that's a step that's so often missed. So learn that and you're going to get to the next level. Um, a couple more I think are critical is knowing your major scales cold, up and down the fretboard. If you're just playing in minor pentatonic all the time, you know, you really want to open the door and learn your major scales up and down the neck. Because if you learn your major scales, then you know all the modes of the major scale. Okay, they're just different variations of the major scale. So learning the major scales really, when I teach students that, or when I teach privately and teach students the major scales and the mode it, it just totally sets them off and it gives them a whole another arsenal to choose from when they're soloing and improvising so knowing those major scales is really critical so you'll want to do that and then um, I guess probably the last thing would be an, oh by the way when you're learning those major scales learning them up and down the neck in all keys and not by the shapes you know you just don't want to learn shapes you want to learn the notes and the intervals that's the best way to do it and that's what will get you to the next level. And then probably one of the most important things which I'm probably going to say last is develop your ear. Um, that is such a critical thing for musicians, all musicians to do, you know. By having a well-developed ear you'll be able to hear the different color of the chords and know what chords are being played just by listening. You'll be able to figure out strum patterns just by listening. You'll be able to land on certain notes when you're playing and your ear will take you to all those right notes. 
If you're singing, you'll be able to match pitches and, and through your vocal exercises, it's going to help develop your ear. Ear training is so critical for a musician. Um, and you really want to have your ear as developed to its full potential. So those are like seven things I guess I mentioned there that if you want to get your guitar playing to the next level, spend a little bit of time on each one of them or analyze your playing and be real honest with yourself and really start targeting the ones that you're deficient in. And uh, you'll be getting up those levels in nothing flat. Rip it up! See you next time.